Hey, what's up? Hello, all your pretty eyes. Betty, what? Yo, it's your boy Tone 202 with our Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Prince of Prince of SoundCloud, SoundClick. It's cold out here. It's cold and rainy. Look at this. It's cold and rainy out here. But, you know, I gotta still do my thing. This is another excerpt of the NBA is fixed. And what's up to my neighbors? <laughs> that watch my YouTube channel for Uh So I was reading about the, uh, I was reading about some of the clauses they're trying to put in effect, and one of them is the amnesty clause. And uh, the amnesty clause, you know, it is what it sounds like, but they're using it on Chris Bosch. And they're using it to free up cap space. And uh, so far, 21 teams have used the amnesty clause. And uh, so, so basically, being that Chris Bosch has had this, you know, uh, these blood clots, and you know, they they pretty much don't allow him to play at all. This is this is what I'm getting. Um, I need to still look more into it, but they don't want him to play. But nonetheless, if they claim amnesty because they don't want him to play for them anymore because his medical conditions they get the free up 75 million dollars that's a lot of jack that's a lot of jack and then when you i mean when you add that on to what they're doing with the free agents and uh the league minimum the league minimum and free agency is going up it's going up by 50 percent so you had your average uh, first pick is would get like five million or something like that, and then you had your league minimum, which is at right below a million dollars. So you know you have you know four million for your first round pick, or you know, and then for your thirtieth round pick, you got you you know a little under a million. So they're going to raise that 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 number is going to skyrocket and the reason why that number is skyrocketing skyrocketing is because of what they've been paying these superstars and this is why the game has become so diluted you know i say this all the time you know and even stephen a smith has said this he was talking about how these teams are you know giving away hundreds of millions of dollars to just one player and in the NFL, the NFL is the same thing. So it's not so much about a team anymore. It, it more or less boils down to that one player. You know, yeah, your your city will win. Your your your, your, your city will be represented. But then, uh, as we're seeing that these superstars just go wherever they want to, there's just no loyalty in the game. This is this is my biggest problem with it. Like, I don't mind trade, but I mind trade when it just looks ridiculous. It's like, when nobody can understand it, it's like, well, Durant did what? Like, like why? So, anyways, getting back to Cap Space and Chris Bosh, because it's a very interesting story. My predictions still stand true that I think he's going to end up playing with, you know, LeBron James, Cleveland somewhere. Uh, <laughs> I also you know, threw out that, you know, LeBron might end up going and playing with the Knicks before his career is over. And somebody said, why in the heck would he go, They, you know, would he go and play with the Knicks? They already have Carmelo, and Carmelo's a ball hog, yada, yada, yada. And uh, I think it won't be for any strategic move above, I just felt like doing it. So I'm just throwing that out there. I think LeBron James is pretty much at the financial uh He's at the financial uh, ability that he can just do what he wants. He's not hes not like an Allen Iverson who is spending his money frivolously, you know, and who has, who has you know, no other major source of income and is just going to go broke. You, that's, that's not what's happening here. LeBron James is a mogul outside of the NBA. And... Um, so he has plenty of income coming in. It's just the NBA is his number one source of income that I know of. But as far as him 
leaving Cleveland and then coming back to Cleveland. I, I think that would hurt Cleveland. It would hurt, okay, it would hurt Cleveland when he leaves like it has before, but I just don't think he'll be gone long. I think if he leaves, he'll leave for like a year and then come back, boom, everything will be everything. He might end his career in Cleveland. This is what I think. But I think he just, I think he's going to want to have fun if his wife doesn't convince him to get out of the NBA. And to bring this all back around, I know he wants to play with Chris Bosch again. So I think Chris is going to end up on Cleveland either this year or next year. I'm really thinking this year, this season coming up, Chris is going to end up playing with LeBron. Uh, they're going to work that out some kind of way because the way I look at it is even with the moves that they're making to try to make it seem like Chris can't play, all I see is Chris can't play here. This did I don't I don't, I just don't I don't see how you can keep him from playing. Period. And you know we read that there uh, they said if a team wants him that they have to you know take the risk and so on and so forth. Not to mention with the clause, the way I'm looking at the amnesty clause is okay. Well, if you're gonna claim amnesty, uh, okay, look at it this way. Remember when? They're, they used to trade, and the other team had to, to foot the bill. They had to, you know, pick up the tab. Like, okay, you want this person? Fine. This this is a buyout. You have to buy them out from us, you know, type of thing. So this is what I'm thinking. If they use the amnesty clause, and you're like, hey, we don't want to pay him this $75 million. We have to let that go. All right, fine. Then this frees up another team that wants him to just go ahead and grab him without paying that $75 million to the team, then they can put Chris under a new contract and um, without having to worry about any team saying what? Like, you don't want nothing to do with him? You claim amnesty legally. Uh, he's not bound to you anymore. Uh, you don't owe him any money. Uh, so, okay, fine. We're going to take him. We're going to put him under a new contract. And there ain't nothing that you could say if you're going to cut all ties with him financially. So this is just the way I'm looking at it. And um, to me, that would clear up Chris in every way to just go to Cleveland without any hindrance whatsoever. So I don't know. You guys help me out with that. Make sure I'm understanding it correctly. But this... This is the way I just see them moving, you know, and Adam Silver. And I, just, I really think they're just, they're placating us, but I think they're playing into LeBron James' hands, you know, like, and, and of course, he's the moneymaker. I think it's all about getting him what he wants and moving around the chess pieces so he can get what he wants and the money can just keep coming in. LeBron James says he wants you know, Mickey Mouse on his team. You better believe there's going to be somebody out there running around with a Mickey Mouse outfit on. And don't make it sound ridiculous because Michael Jordan did it. Michael Jordan wanted Bugs Bunny. What happened? Bugs Bunny was on the court with MJ. I'm just saying, when you're the number one draw in the NBA for the last 13 years, and you say you want somebody on your team, it just doesn't surprise me that all of these financial moves are being made just so Chris can go to Cleveland and probably end his career there. Go there for a couple years, boom, his career is over. Bron Bron got what he wanted, leaves, goes to the Knicks, plays there for a year, has fun, comes back to Cleveland, ends his career. Like I said, not unless his wife uh, convinces him that he doesn't want to do any of that. It's your boy Tone 202. Peace.